Our attention will move quickly from Mullapur to Kolkata, where Kolkata Knight Riders and Trans Sunrises Hyderabad will kickstart a season that has expectations. After Gautam Gambhir has returned to the franchise that he so successfully led as a player, the Sunrises have gone through a few changes themselves, a high-profile captaincy appointment, the World Cup winning cap captain Pat Cummins. Oh, that's, that's not easy to say, I just realized, Captain Pat Cummins. <laughs> but he's a World Cup winning captain, he's the World Test Championship winning captain, but he captains in this format for the first time. So there are plenty of storylines to unpack. On Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN for Kenford Timeout with Tom Moody, Mitch McClanagan and Wasim Jaffer. I just realized what a tongue twister Captain Pat Cummins is. <laughs> Can you guys say it? <laughs> captain Pat uh, Cummins? No, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> When you do Hey Captain, I'm going to make you say Hey Captain Pat Cummins about four <laughs> times. Okay. I don't uh, need to do Hey Captain with Pat Cummins. <laughs> All right. As it turns out, he started on an auspicious note. Sunrisers won the toss at the Eden Gardens and Cummins has decided to bowl first. Uh, that's what he did the last time he won a toss in India. And we don't remember that date very fondly, the 19th of November. But it is an advantage, I think, Wasim Jaffer at the Eden Gardens to win the toss and bowl first in your opening game. Yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's a good ground to bowl first and, and bat second because it's hard to defend small small ground uh, and it's a good start uh, for Sunrisers Hyderabad and it, for Pat Cummins. It's what this franchise that you have such fond memories with, Tom, would like, the importance of getting your first game, little things uh, going your way underway. We saw that with CSK, you called it a massive result for Uttaraj Gaikwad. It looks like uh, Punjab will get the job done at a new home ground against Delhi and if Sunrisers are to start well for a team that's had such a tough time of it in recent seasons, finishing bottom last year, what would it mean? Yeah, well, there's two parts to that. I think in a tournament like the IPL, your first couple of games are crucial. So if you can get off to a winning start, it's, it's enormous for the momentum of, of your franchise. And the second uh, part to that is that there's a different subplot with Pat Cummins coming as a new captain high-profile appointment, as you, as you pointed out, and it would be nice for him to get off to a winning start and try to get that sort of positive momentum early um, in a franchise that's lost its way over the last couple of years. That's a good point that you raised, and that, that graphic that came up, we're going to go deeper into that. The decline of Hyderabad, and I say that with respect because I know it's got a tremendous fan base, a great reputation, and for the first time, Tom Moody's reduced to a, a number on the, on the graphic that we've used. They've used three coaches... In the last few years, before that, 16 to 20, when Moody led them to a title in, 28, in 2016 and a final in 2018, uh, it's all gone a bit off. And they haven't made the playoffs for three seasons. They finished bottom of the league in two of those. And uh, there have been multiple changes in personnel. We try and understand what it will take to bring a franchise back on track. It must be one of the hardest things in arguably the toughest T20 league in the world. Where would we start? Well, you don't start with you know, musical chairs. And that's been the issue with Sunrisers. They've, they've thought that the answer is ch with change. You know, if this doesn't work, we'll go to this. If this doesn't work, we'll go to that. Whether it be coaches, whether it be captains or players in the, in the selection. We've seen a lot of movement around selection and sort of uncertainty around the brand of cricket they want to play and the philosophy they have as a, as a franchise. Um, you only have to look at the successful franchises. And you mentioned CSK. They're, they're probably the best blueprint when it comes to IPL cricket in that stability and their philosophy is just keeping it simple. So you know, that's something that they can do moving forward with Dan Vittori now as the new coach, Pat Cummins as the captain. They should be in those positions for some time to create that stability. In stark contrast is the franchise that you were associated with, which is known as the benchmark. Teams outside of MINCSK want to be M I and CSK, and to some degree, I sympathise with them because not everyone has that core group of players or can manage that sort of success. But can they do what a team like M I has done? Is that easier said than done? Uh, Tom's point is probably the most pertinent one. It's that you have stability; that your captain and your coach don't change, your support staff don't change, and it gives you some structure to to how you run day in and day out and year by year as well. And and making sure that when you do pick your team, you retain as many players as you possibly can from the previous year and you're just adding rather than big overhauls. So, so that's what next time, obviously this year, you've got the start of a new combination. Ideally, they can retain that combination, as Tom said, next year going into a big option and get the right core of players for a good tenure in the next 
two, three, four years. Where, where I think Sunrisers are unique, Wasim, is they're a title winning side, but they've never been a side associated with one prominent Indian name around mm. their brand, around their success, whether it's Rohit for MI or MS for CSK, Gambhir to a degree for KKR. Sunrisers, and now that we look at the Sunrisers of today or the last few years, can we say that they perhaps don't have the Indian contingent that a lot of the other teams have? They've, they've let go of a lot of good players. You know, that's been a problem. Bhuvi is probably the only one who's played for a lot of seasons for them. But barring Bhuvi, you haven't, uh, you can associate a player who's played there for a lot of seasons. Yeah. And that's partly because, because of the results they have. They've chopped and changed too much. And that's been the problem. And hopefully, they learn their lesson and you know be stable because they've they've such a good, big fan base uh, and they've been a title winning championship team so mm. hopefully they stick to you know one formula mm. all right well it's so important for a new captain <coughs> and a new coach to come in with the clarity that has perhaps uh, evaded the sunrises in the last couple of years we've seen so many changes uh, including in their playing 11 with their overseas combination harry brook has come and gone but as we look at the first Sunrisers eleven in the Vittori Cummins era, uh, and we see something that is, I think it might please Tom Moody. <laughs> we thought Travis Head might be an automatic selection given high profile player, won the World Cup for Pat Cummins a few months back in this part of the world. But they've gone with the Janssen Cummins pair, so two bowling all rounders, and Markram and Hendrik Klaas and the two South Africans with the bat. And Natrajan, Bhuvneshwar Kumar, Mayang, Markande make up the rest of the team. Now remember that this is the bowling first 11 that does not feature uh, either Washington Sundar or Umran Malik, which I find quite interesting. Shabazz Ahmed is there, who was a, bit of a, who was a trade from RCB. Tom, thoughts? Uh, the first thing that stands out is Abhishek Sharma is in the impact uh, zone. Hmm. So I'd imagine he'll come into that team and open the batting. So you'll have Agarwal, Sharma, Tripathi, Markram is your top four and then class and five. Uh, so that to me looks very healthy, very strong. I'm pleased the three Indian talented players are batting one, two and three because that's exactly where they belong and they're all equally um, uh, dangerous players. Uh, I think the overseas player combination they've got, I think they've got a right. Marco Janssen has been in terrific form. He's one of the reasons they were successful as a franchise in the South African League. Uh, his batting has grown in leaps and bounds, as, as, as well as his uh, stature. Um, but he, he's, a, he's a genuine all-rounder now. So he belongs at number seven and he can own that position. Plus, he's also a very good new ball bowler. Mm. Exactly that. Um, he gives Pat Cummings the ability to come into his familiar role as first change bowler. Yeah. The Indian call is a big one, I think. Washington mm. Sundar remains their most expensive Indian player. They've gone with Shabazz Ahmed ahead of him. And we don't see Washi coming in as the impact sub because, as Tom said, the better selection would be for Abhishek Sharma too. Yeah, and I'm surprised because they've got a lot of left-handers, KKR, uh, to not see the right-hander off-spinner yes. playing for them who could add value as a batter also. Just but, just on that, Ma Markram will probably play that role. Yeah. That's what they're thinking. They'll yeah. think Markram does it for South Africa, does it very effectively with yeah. South Africa with the new ball mm -hmm. and also in the middle phase. So they're probably thinking, well, that... We can cover that box yeah, yeah. with Aiden Markram. I guess yeah, the other call is between Shabazz and Washi, though. Who's yeah, Shabazz, is a, Shabazz is a better batsman, though. I you would say that? Yeah. Probably he could uh, bat at number seven. Different bowler, too. Yeah. yeah. And as well, like, you're not probably going to play two spinners um, at KKR, at Kolkata, the way the ground's played over the, mm. the recent IPLs. It's more of a seamer wicket friendly early and mm. they've probably assessed the wicket and gone, well, mm. we, we probably need to play the extra seamer. I mean, if things go up to plan, then between Cummins, Janssen, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar and Natrajan, I think was in yeah. there, mm. you should get 16 overs. You just And there's Markande. Yeah, so. I, I think it's a good side because mm. you've got Natarajan and Bhuvi to close the innings. Yeah. You've got, you know, good new ball bowlers that can swing it. One gets yeah. good, good extreme bounce. You've got Pat Cummins as world-class bowler coming in first change mm. in a familiar role. And they've got the spin option. So they've yeah. got every base covered. This is, uh, this is almost a well, welcome first 11. Yeah. That oh. is balanced, that covers bases. And it could have been a tricky one given you've all opined this is a tough team to pick mm. your yeah. overseas balance. And only after that do you put the rest of the It pieces. was only a tough team if they felt the need to play Travis Head given that they went hard for him in the auction. Mm. But given that they you know, haven't felt that need, 
um, yeah. it's created that ease of giving them the options they've got today. Right. Well, as Tom Moody was uh, just making that remark of uh, his most immediate franchise, former franchise, his first franchise, his coach has picked up their first point. Punjab have beaten Delhi. We'll come to that in a little while. Got a little trickier for them. Went to the last over. Wouldn't be the last game this season that goes that way. But our attention for now will remain on Pat Cummins and the Sunrisers. Someone who knows Pat Cummins better than any of us, you'd think is his colleague Stephen Smith, who has also made his appearance on ESPN Quick Info Timeout. Here is what Steve had to say. It's going to be a good challenge for him. Um, you know, he's never captained any T20 cricket, I don't think. So coming in hot to the IPL, um, he's obviously had a very successful campaign as captain for Australia the last few years. Um, he, he works really well with Dan Vittori, who, who's at Australia as well. So I'm sure they're going to have a close bond, um, lots of strategy sessions together. And um, uh, he'll certainly help him um, uh, before he goes out onto the field. And then once he's out there, it's run the show. And I'm sure he's going to do a really good job. They'll definitely be part of it, that he'll um, be looking at the, the numbers and seeing what's suited for different scenarios. and then. I think the, the most important thing is playing the wicket that's in front of you and um, I think he does that really well with his bowling, he sums it up and um, you know whether he needs to take the pace off the ball and bowl cutters, bowl into the wicket, those kind of things, he does that really well and he'll be able to share that information with the other bowlers out there and, um, and they'll, they'll find the best way forward. I'm sure he's going to have to bowl in all different phases of the game and he, he does that well. He's a good new ball bowler, he's got the ability to swing the ball particularly in and if there's any movement in the, the wicket he, he gets, gets it out of it. Um, and then in the middle overs I think he'll be using two bounces quite often, um, bowling that back of a length, changing the pace and then at the death the same, he'll, he'll just mix it up, try to be as unpredictable as possible and, um, and, and use his skills wisely. He's still played a lot of T20 cricket in the um, in the hiatus, I suppose he's had from uh, IPL. Um, you know, he's played a lot of World Cups and done really well. So, you know, I, I think we're going to see him nice and fresh. He's had a couple of weeks off. Um, he's going to be taking that new ball, swinging it back down the line, which is always a, a big threat, and and bowling some good death overs as well, I would imagine. So. You know, he's, he's got a lot to live up to with the price tag he's gone for, but, um, yeah, I'm sure he's going to do a really good job. All right, that was Steve Smith on his good friend and uh, teammate Pat Cummins, and this is Pat Cummins on his good friend and teammate Mitchell Stark. And he says it's uh, one of the beauties of the IPL. I've been playing with Starkey for 15 years. I can't remember another game where I've played against him. Also, it's going to be weird looking across and seeing him in the other dugout. Now, that's... What Pat Cummins says, it's going to be weird watching Mitch Stark in the other dugout, which takes us to something new that we're going to play with uh, Tom Moody, Mitch McClanagan and Wasim Jaffer. <laughs> You're on timeout. It's called Fact or Fiction. Right? I'm going to throw a statement at you and put in the calculation quickly and tell me if it's a fact or a fiction. First thing, Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark have never faced each other in the IPL. Fact or fiction? They've never faced each other in the IPL. Asim says fact. Fact. Mitch says fact. Fiction. Are you going to read my face and try and see what it is? That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, that's what you did. I know you did. And you're right, because I'm not a good poker player. The answer <laughs> is actually fiction, because Cummins, uh, who was playing for KKR, and Stark uh, was playing for RCB. And in a yeah. rain-reduced game, 10-over game in Bangalore, they did line up against each other. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, and it's happened only three times in senior representative cricket, the other two being big bash games. So Mr. Moody gets the first one. There's a bit of, there's a nugget for you. You're going to be playing now, but it has not happened often, so you can't blame Pat Cummins for not remembering the last time. Next statement. 2018. You remember that year? 2018 is the only year Hyderabad have defeated Kolkata at the Eden Gardens. Is that a fact or a fiction? Wait, I'll let you go last, since you have an advantage on this. 2018 is the only year Hyderabad beat Kolkata at the Eden Gardens. Fact or fiction? Fact. Fiction. Fact. And you know that? Oh, it's an educated guess. Okay, Why educated start guess. start from that end, so we can at least give me a chance <laughs> of getting it right. I just, I just have memories, of, you know, <laughs> bad memories of going there and getting beaten. Yeah. But uh, and Andre Russell yeah. being on the end of a couple of them. 
where yes. we think we had the game in our hand, suddenly three mm. overs later, no, you haven't. But as it turns out, it is indeed a fact in 2018 that KKR uh, were beaten twice, in fact, by the Sunrisers, which included a win in the qualifier, second qualifier. Uh, they did lose, they have, the Sunrisers lost every one of their remaining six matches at that venue. So, there you go. Tom Moody got that right. Next one. Fact or fiction. Travis Head has not hit a T2050 since the start of the pandemic. Right, so we're going all the way back to fiction. 2020. Wasim quickly says fiction. Tom? Yeah, I'm fiction. Fair. Okay, he's made just the 150. The answer is fiction. Oh, he's made just the <laughs> 150. <laughs> oh, this is shocking. This In is such a, you guys innings. told them my answers. And that was a 48 ball 91 against South Africa in Durban last September. So, again, not necessarily a player who's played a lot of 2020 cricket, but his stocks as a white ball cricketer have certainly been on the rise. Uh, two to go. Get on the board by then, Mitch. Come on. Andre Russell has hit sixes more frequently than any other batter in T20s in the last 12 months. We're looking at a minimum of 50 sixes. So is it a fact or is it fiction? Russell has hit sixes more frequently than any other batter in T20s more in the last Joshua. 12 months. Mitch? More than Joshua. Well, well, is it a fact, fact or is well, it also fiction? fact? Fact. From fiction. 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 Mitch is on the board. Sold on the dummy. How good. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> you went first. Yeah. You went against him. But he's, he's you've gone with Jaswell's hit more sixes and T20 cricket. No, I was just cricket. throwing it out there to mislead you and say fact. <laughs> Work. Lovely. How good. That is, that is, a, that is such a predictable bluff. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a, it's got him on the board. Russell has cleared the boundary once every 6.1 balls. So we're looking at... A, Frequency percentage. Do you know where I saw that? On ESPN. Classen is second Klassen. on the list with yeah. 7.3, both in action today. Uh, I misread the question. Uh, that happens. Yeah, of course it does, particularly yeah. when you're reading them. <laughs> Don't blame the messenger, man. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Gotham Gambir's last win. That's where we come to our fact and fiction uh, final statement. Gotham Gambir's last win as Kolkata. A uh, captain came against Hyderabad. Is that fact or fiction? fiction. Tom Moody? Fiction. Wasim says fiction. Mitchell McClanagan? I went first last time, so I'll go after this time. Fact. Uh, fact. <laughs> you were waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that game? It was in 2017, and you were in charge of the Sunrisers franchise. But Gambir's side prevailed over that team. Uh, in the Eliminator yes. in 2017. Yes. Well, Gambir got 32 affected, of 19 in a rain. Rain okay. affected game, which made it very difficult. There's another way I would put it off air, but <laughs> made it very difficult for us. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, they went on to lose to Mumbai Indians in the second yeah. qualifier. And that turned out to be Gotham Gambir's last game for KKR. Mm. That was very enjoyable, I thought. <laughs> yeah. All of you got on the board. I'm not even, I'm not even keeping score anymore. I got four. Tom was. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows. Time to look at the KKR team, shall we, as we fast approach uh, the evening fixture on this Saturday doubleheader. They have a, they had a call or two to make. This is their batting first 11, remember. And Phil Salt, replacing Jason Roy, is preferred over Emanola Gurbaz as uh, the keeper option, the overseas player. Russell Narayan and Stark with his record fee were all on expected lines and they have gone with Ramandeep Singh and Harshit Rana. Uh, they could have had, they, they will have the option of Suya Sharma, the leg spinner, to come in when they bowl. Uh, otherwise, it looks like a team that doesn't scream out too many surprises. Wasim? Yeah, it looks a, looks a good good side and good, good batting strength as well as, you know, they've strengthened their fast bowling. So, it looks a solid KKR team. Yeah, good uh, thoughts on Phil Salt over Gurbaz, Mitch? Yeah, look, Phil Salt had IPL form. He performed extremely well against the West Indies, but coming off the SAT 20, uh, he really did struggle. So form is always a thing with Phil Salt. He's, when he's hot, he's, he's sensational, uh, but he does go on those runs where he doesn't get runs. So Gerbaz, for mine, uh, would have been my option. I think he's an aggressive uh, up top, just like Phil Salt, but he likes back of a length just a little bit more. Uh, he's been in decent form lately. Mm, you were impressed by the thinking behind the Sunrisers 11? Are you with KKR as well? Yeah, I don't mind that side. That looks like a, that looks a you know, nicely balanced side. Um, 
The tough decision was obviously at the top of the order with Salt or Gabaz. I thought they may have gone with Gabaz purely on the basis that he's a, an existing KKR player that has played that role at the top of the order and he's actually done you know, quite well recently, so he's carrying some good form. Salt, there's no question, is a dangerous player, but they're both dangerous players. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, simple as that. It's time for Tom, Mitch and Rashim to pick some dangerous players. We haven't quite got their scores from the first game yet, so they will also be playing a little bit in the dark. That doesn't matter, they are anyway. And we are going to enter our impact zone again. Just to remind our viewers, early days in the tournament, but we'll have our panel of guests regularly pick three players that they think will have the maximum impact. And depending on how those players perform as per ESPN Quick Info's smart stats, there are a better way to assess T20 credentials rather than conventional numbers. Uh, they will go up and down a leaderboard, a leaderboard that saw Tom Moody handsomely sitting at the top last evening. And I think Mitch McClanagan was pleased, at least in what he saw in the afternoon game with Kuldeep Yadav, Getting him some points. Not enough to, to kind of bring in that lead, I don't think. But, but, so I'm going to, got some making up to do here. All right. Now, because I think you're the only one who's never gone first, I'll give you that privilege now with a host of all rounders. Well, I haven't gone first, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Stop oh, it, though. So neither have I. He's gone first twice. Pope's is wrong. <laughs> Pope's is wrong. Let's go. Okay. I know all one, of you will get to go first to something. Pope's is wrong. Yes, go good. See, <laughs> that's just meant to be. Okay. Uh. Sweet. All of the teams? No. Uh, <laughs> all the technological yeah. advancement we've made in that time. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're going all round. All course. rounders. We can show you the teams. We've got plenty of options. Yeah, Russell, lots of options. Don't Pat we? Cummins, Marco Janssen, yeah. Shabazz, Sunil yeah. Narayan. I'm going to go uh, Andre Russell. Andre Russell for Mitch. Marco Tom. Janssen. Janssen for Moody. Ooh, I was going to go Marco Janssen. Who was, who was Pat Cummins is left. Uh, if you call him on Shabazz Ahmed. Uh, I'll go Pat Cummins. Okay, you're going to go Pat Cummins as the all-rounder, yes, which is fair. Time. time to go for the batters. Tom. Um, I'm going to go for Markram. Aiden Markram for Tom. Was he? Klassen. Ah, damn it. <laughs> 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 uh, we gone now. Oh, uh, let's go Phil Salt. Phil okay. Salt. Yeah. Oh, three overseas. No one's backing any of the Indian boys over here. Shreyas Iyer, what an important... Game, this is for him. We'll have that chat at halftime, uh, I promise you. The bowlers now. Uh, Wasim. So. Wasim gets to go first. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. It's Bovi. It's Bovi. Oh, it's Mitchell Stark. Mitchell Stark. Son on the run. All right. I think that's a good pick. Okay. So, we're going right. to put all that together now and make sense of it. Uh, before we wrap things up, uh, let's have a quick reflection on the afternoon game at Mullapur where the Punjab Kings have started on a winning note at their new home ground. It stretched to the last over, a game that we thought Delhi had its moments in. In the end, Wasim Jafar, key difference? I think they'll be glad that they got over the line, but uh, they would have liked to have won a little more comfortably, mm. the kind of position they were in. Uh, but they'll be still be happy they've got some points at home, which uh, that didn't happen last season. Mm. They did something different, though. They sent in Sam Curran at four, which Basim was talking about as well. What are your assessments on how good a win this is for Punjab? Yeah, I think it's an excellent win. Um, yeah, I think Delhi is going to be one of those sides this year that's going to be unpredictable and quite hard to play against because at times they're going to, you know, just come out of the mm -hmm. blocks and blow you away. Um, I, I see them having difficulty being consistent as a side. Um, I thought the move um, with Sam Curran was predictable because I think what they wanted from Sam Curran is that sort of anchor uh, anchor player that's a left-hander yeah. that can just allow the stroke players to play around him. And exactly how it unfolded, Sam Curran played his role to you know perfection. He only bowled one over, mm. which went for 10, but his batting contribution was quite yeah. considerable. Yeah, is that something we can see more of now? Because we well, yeah, he got a score. <laughs> yeah, <He's> 63. <laughs> yeah. And I thought when Sam Curran's promoted, yeah. he'll be thrown up as a pinch hitter, as a dasher, yeah. like I you mean, were. That's how, that's how he's been used in the past, mm. isn't it? Um, I think he showed more class than that. And, and I'll be completely honest, I'm surprised with the form he's had coming into this tournament that he batted so well and gave a, a platform for Livingston to also get in. Because Sam Curran was on a score already when he came to the crease and just made that, that finishing role for Livingston just that little bit easier. But it was a, a tight game in the end. I, I feel for Delhi. I mean, they made they made the brave call and, and 
uh, putting impact player with uh, Pavel up with the top Pavel, as well, yeah. um, Pavel up the top as well, and and then for Ishan Sharma hmm. to go down injured, uh, they really had to find some overs. So it was a bit unfortunate in the end. There's also a critical drop catch at the end of that innings. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, David Warner dropped one at mid off, which he would 99 times out of 100 swallow. Yeah. And that could have really shifted the needle in that game because that was yeah. the last ball of the, the second last over. Yeah. And uh, they would it, have needed eight, eight off that last, last over. There, there are a couple of those. Then there's Tristan yeah. Stubbs so putting just, down Sam lot. Curran earlier yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. He would have still be. probably backed. Liam Livingston to get eight off last over. That's but another important talking point because Livingston's another player who they paid big money for. Yeah. Had such a great season a couple of years back and then through injury and whatnot. Him starting a season, finishing the job. I think Punjab has got the batting order right, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Jitesh Sharma ahead of Liam Livingston and Livingston playing a finisher's role, I think, you know, suits him more than him batting at four or five. Mm. Uh, would you be too concerned? about Delhi here with regards to how limited the bowling looked. Yes, they had an injury with Ishan and they played the impact sub, but is that a team that can strike a better balance? I think they'll welcome uh, their overseas pace bowlers yes. when they're available. I think that that is the finishing, the cherry on top of the cake for them to get the balance for their side. And I think that was clearly missing that sort of world-class pace bowler. Mm to be able to sort of move the game one way or the other. Mm. And that impact sub's not going to happen often, right? So they were at a disadvantage. So you probably won't read into it too much from from how the locals perform. But it could it could be a deciding case for yeah. who plays mm. the next game. Porel may be ahead of Ricky Bui. Mm. Something like that Possibly. could happen in year Possibly. 11. I mean, with Ishan Sharma going off the field, and then if they had, on a good day, had Mukesh Kumar as a yeah. mm. sub, you know, would have made a lot of difference yeah. in this kind of chase. Mm. It, it also perhaps uh, makes you think of who you want to name in your first 11 and who is your most dispensable bowler. Mm. You would have thought Mukesh Kumar will come in unless we have something drastic, but you could have also named Mukesh Kumar ahead of Ishan Sharma or Khalil Ahmed and had one of them sort of come in. Would, is Mukesh Kumar the third best seamer to be... Placed on the bench, if you know what I'm trying to say over mm. here. These things can happen. They happen rarely, but they can happen. I think last season, Ishan did well with whatever opportunity he's got. He's always had uh, Shikhar Dhawan's number. Uh, even today, he got him out. Yeah. Uh, so, probably that's the reason why he bowls the new ball well. Can swing it compared to Mukesh Kumar. Right. Assessment of Rishabh Pant. That would be something that fans would want to know and see. Yeah. The batting scorecard wouldn't say much. But from what you saw, would you be happy? Well, I was very surprised with how well he moved. Uh, at the crease, there was a couple of times where he stepped out, didn't quite get to the pitch of the ball and was able to quickly adjust, get across and smother it for one. And, and when you're coming back from the injuries that he's come back from, that you want to see that lateral movement, those quick movements that you've got to make. And his keeping was outstanding. Yeah. Uh, behind the stumps, he was high quality, and, and that's what they've missed. Mm. Tom? Yeah, look, I, I, I was also... Uh, very pleasantly surprised to see him move as, as freely as he did. And his agility behind the stumps was terrific. He's, he's got such good hands uh, and he makes things happen you know, behind the stumps. Good stumping as well uh, in his uh, performance. With the bat, to me, it looked like a classical case of a, a player that's short of game time. Simple as that. Nothing more than that. Just short of game time. Just didn't quite have the rhythm in his game. And that will come. You know, whether yeah. it takes two or three games, four games, that will come because you yeah. don't lose that special talent. Mm, right. And, I mean, the keeping, he had a smart stumping that went in favour of the batter. Then he got Jitesh Sharma. Yeah. And you never know, if he keeps that going, he stays fit, you almost think Pant will get a score at some point. Yeah. But his name is still very much in the thick of things or scheme of things for the World Cup. I won't say that straight away. Uh, I would like him to play six, seven, eight games and then hopefully his batting improves. Today he even tried to slog a few balls. Mm. On good days, you know, Rishabh Pant of old would have probably connected, would have made the difference. But like Tom said, if he plays two, three, four games, I think that will automatically come in and we'll see the old self of Rishabh Pant. Mm. All right. Well, regardless, it was just nice to see him back and he got a very warm reception <coughs> from the away crowd. Uh, at uh, Mullapur, and we'll see plenty more of Rishabh Pant, we hope, in this IPL. Before we wrap up, a rapid-fire review of the afternoon game from Wasim Mitch and Tom Moody. They know the drill. 20 seconds to each question that I throw at them. 
All right, let's start with you, Mitch. Is Sam Curran more of a batter than a bowler now? Your 20 seconds start now. Well, after today's performance, I'd have to say he definitely is. Uh, the way he managed the innings, he played like a proper batsman rather than that pinch hitter that we've seen in the past. With the ball, look, he if the conditions are swinging, he's effective. But it's nice to see the batting take over the bowling. Okay, uh, perfect timing. Well done. Wasim Jafar, your turn. Now, you said you think they got the batting order right. My question is, with current batting at four, is Punjab's batting perhaps a bit too shallow for better bowling attacks? Your 20 seconds start now. It can, uh, but if, if they fire with uh, the, all their batsmen, I think it's, it's more than enough. Sashank Singh is a capable batsman. They definitely uh, shouldn't have allowed Shah Rukh Khan to go, in my opinion. Uh, but I think it's still a very good batting lineup. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing so well, smooth <laughs> as you like. Pressure for you, Moody. Oh, Openers are off to a great Always start. under pressure with these two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question for Tom Moody. Was Prithvi Shaw being dropped a surprise? 20 seconds starting now. I think it was a surprise to, to most of us purely because we know the promise that he has and the genius that he has. We've seen glimpses of that and a lot of people would think that the start of the season let him prove everyone you know, wrong with regards to you know, whether he can make it or not. So it was a surprise. Mm, all right. I will, we're all doing very well, I must yeah, say. Yeah, we're doing well with the yeah. timing, aren't we? Like Where's the clock? Where's the clock? Oh, the clock's oh, the there. Clock. I saw the little side <laughs> idea as well. No, I didn't see the clock. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mitch McClanagan, is the Delhi pace attack among the weakest you've seen in the league? Your 20 seconds start now. Well, no, it's not. When Anurag Nokia comes back, uh, they're definitely not. So, I'm going to leave it there. Mm. Okay. We can leave it right there. And we go to Wasim Jafar and a question to the Delhi attack. Uh, why did they pick Ishant? or Khalil over Mukesh in their first 11? I think purely because uh, how well both of these uh, can swing the ball. Uh, they wanted wickets early on. Uh, Khalil can swing it being a left arm seamer. Ishan Sharma has bowled well to Shikhar Dhawan. And I thought they bowled well. Uh, but uh, I think that was the main reason. And to wrap it up, Tom Moody, your impressions on the comeback of Rishabh Pant. I'm going to look at the clock here. Uh, my impressions were very uh, positive. It's great to see him back, and I think the whole cricketing community are thrilled to see him back, particularly given what he's been through. Uh, yes, it was a, a modest as, uh, start with regards to performance, but we know what is going to be down the road, and that's going to be blockbuster Rishabh Pant. Mm, all right. <laughs> well, well done, all of you. You've done a terrific job there, and we should wrap things up. We're already... Uh, two overs into the evening game and I can also tell you that Sunil Narayan came out to open with Phil Salt and Sunil Narayan has been run out. What well on That's a Sally. short story. <laughs> <laughs> you take Sunil? That's a oh, short story. Yeah. For starters okay. though, we return to I Narayan. Bowler, so we return to Narayan, the opener. Gautam Gambhir has almost done a retro move upon his return. I thought that experiment had run its course, Tom? Yeah, it's like old fashioned. It comes back mm -hmm. eventually. Uh, it's like the flared trousers that you're wearing now. You know, there will be a time that they'll come back. <laughs> Certainly not in the next five years, but it will be a time. Maybe it's sun in their eyes time, time this year. Well, hopefully you'll outlive me and see that time. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> if, I may, if I may get a response from either of you, though, mm. uh, because it moved, moves Venki Ayer to three, Shreyas Ayer to four, mm. Nitish Rana to five, and, you know, you can keep extending that batting lower. I think it's just like, uh, you know, a, a scapegoat or something like that, if mm. I can say, you know, just go out there, throw your bat, because Free hit. Sunil mm. Narayan doesn't give you that many runs, you know, lower down the order. So he used to, he used to, mm. but as his yeah. age is killed. Yeah, he's not as consistent, though, yeah. yeah. The, the, the one positive with Narayan in that role is he doesn't chew up balls. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't, he, he, he either he has, a, has an impact or he's gone no, he very quickly. Yeah. That being said... This is probably not the attack for him to do it against. Yeah, that's true. You, you've got Pat Cummings and you've got Marco Janssen. Yeah. You get the ball to bounce above the stumps, which is his kryptonite. Yeah. As it turns out, he's just got run out to direct hit. So his, uh, he's the short ball wasn't even an option. Yeah. Uh, as it turns, there's a lot that's happening in that game. Marco Janssen's gone for 20 in his first over. Phil Salt's taken him down. Mm. And I just remember now Marco Janssen at the Eden Gardens. That's when... The World Cup just changed for him. Rohit Sharma took him down at this venue and oh. after that he had a pretty 
tough period of play. So there are a lot of subplots here, but why don't we pick all of it up at the end of uh, the KKR innings? That is a lot of information for you to predict a first inning score. Hmm. 20 for 1, 2 overs, Narayan opening and gone. Salt on the charge, Wasim Jafar. I'm going to go 200. Ooh, Mitch? Oh, 201. <laughs> oh, okay. 196. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You just, I, you never disappoint. You always go 15, 15 lower than that. No, it's, it's fine. I want, I, I want to wait till you go, when these guys go something, and you go X plus 30, X plus 40. That day will it, come. It will come. It's a long tournament. All right. We look forward to your company at the end of the innings. Should be a good one this KKR SRH. Join us then for Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Rook and 4 Timeout. Download the mobile app if you haven't already. It keeps you covered with all that's going on on a busy double header weekend in the IPL 2024. We'll see you at the end of the KKR innings. All new hot and techy breath up, the city bird SUV.